this video you will learn how to use views within dashboards. A common use case is for example a dashboard providing a quick overview of the utilization of vSphere resources. We start with an empty canvas and plan our dashboard. At the top we would like to have a list of clusters with their utilization related most important metrics and below that list another list with ES6i hosts within the selected cluster again as well with their most important utilization related metrics. Good, so let's give the dashboard a new name and switch from the widgets to the available view types. First we place two list views on the empty canvas as planned at the beginning and we resize them to better use the available space. We begin with a very basic config. As always, as the first step, we rename the widget. If we now just save that widget, it will tell us that the configuration is invalid. That's because we did not specify any actual view in this widget. To shorten the list of available views, we set the filter to subject equals cluster compute resource for our use case. And now we select one of the views provided by VROPS out of the box. After saving the widget, we see that there is still no data being displayed. As this view is basically the starting point in this dashboard, we need to set the self provider option to on. Being self provider, we need to specify the input data so the objects being displayed in this view. And we do this with select objects, going to vCenter adapter. And now we could either select a certain cluster or a certain data center. Or if you want to see all clusters within vSphere, we go to vSphere and vSphere world. vSphere world basically contains every single vSphere object managed by this VROPS instance. The output data is still the same view we selected before. And now after saving the widget, we see clusters in the list view. Now we need to configure the other list view widget. And this time the self provider is off as we will receive the cluster from the previous view. The output data is again a predefined view. We can limit the list by setting the filter to subject equals host system, which is the ESXi host, and select one of the available views, which is appropriate for our use case. Now let's rename and save it. The last step of the configuration is the interaction between those two views. We connect the output of the first view with the input of the second view. Now we can save the dashboard and anytime we select a cluster in a first view, this cluster is the input from the second view showing the ESXi host within that cluster. Up to this point we were using out of the box views. If you would like to use your own custom view, you just edit it again. Go to the list, you can limit the list by setting a filter, for example to a prefix you are usually using as part of the name and selecting the right view. If the new view needs more space to display our columns, we can easily resize the view widget. For the list of hosts, we follow the same procedure. We limit the list of views by setting the filter by object type and part of the name so we can easily find our custom views and we select the one we would like to use here. Let's resize the second view to make the appearance more consistent save the dashboard and now we can use it anytime we select a cluster we see the utilization kpis for the cluster and we see also utilization kpis for the host within the cluster in this video you have learned how to add and configure views within dashboards and how the self provider option works for views in the next video you will learn how to configure more complex widgets like for example the heat map and how to create reusable metric configurations. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you don't miss the next part.